I am so happy to be joined right now by Kumi Naidu, who's the Executive Director of Greenpeace International. What brings an organization like Greenpeace to this conference here at Malaysia? For Greenpeace and for the environmental movement generally, we have come to understand that to address the biggest challenge that humanity faces, which is to avert catastrophic climate change, we cannot do this without the active energized participation of the women's movement mm -hmm. at a global level but in every community around the world. I would argue that climate change is fundamentally a women's issue yes. for multiple reasons. Uh, sadly, even though we tried to get men to share more mm -hmm. in parenting, mm -hmm. the reality is that women still carry a disproportionate mm -hmm. burden of concern of our children and the yes. future generation. Yes. And climate change basically threatens our children and grandchildren's future. So having the eloquence of women's voices in this fight to avert catastrophic climate change is critically important. Yes. Also, women are the ones in Africa, for example, who do the farming. Yeah. Most of our farmers in mm -hmm. Africa are women and they are suffering already now mm -hmm. as a result of change in climate, water scarcity, land scarcity as a result of climate impacts. So when we think about the planet as a whole, we have to recognize that if what's at stake, future generation, food security, uh, yeah. economy and so on, women are at the center of it. And the sad thing is that even though women have not been responsible for the policy choices that have got us in this mess of reliance on oil, coal and gas rather than going to renewable energies, yeah. and it's been done by men largely, it is women that are paying the first and most brutal price. The last thing I would say is that even the CIA in the Pentagon mm -hmm. says that the biggest future threat to peace, security and stability is not going to come from traditional threats or even mm -hmm. uh, terrorism, but is actually going to come from the impacts of climate change. Wow. So if there's going to be an increase in chaos, conflict and war, yes. sadly we know that whenever there is war, women and children are the ones that pay the biggest price. So in that sense, I would say we were here to actually try to make a connection between all the other important issues that the women's movement is already addressing, mm -hmm. but to also ensure that climate change is one of the key issues that is part of that concentration. And I'm pleased to say that more and more individual women, more and more grassroots women's organizations as well as global uh, women's movement yeah. organizations are all already on message. Yes. Now the challenge that remains mm -hmm. is, okay, we are aware that we have to work together, we need to get it right. The challenge is, how do we get the mechanics, how do we get the narrative, how do we get the discourse, and I believe conferences like this help us in that very challenging and important process. Well, one last question is, so this is going to be posted on a website that's focusing on how social media and technology can really be a force for global good. What can this online community do to advocate and get behind these issues to get us where we need to be in the future? I think all online communities must become more and more creative yep. in the use of social media. Mm -hmm. I think that it's already done a tremendous amount of positive things. Mm -hmm. It's connecting people from very, very big geographical distances because yeah. that allows a success story that happens in the Solomon Islands in the Pacific yes. to be shared with a community in Jamaica. Right? or something that happens in Africa can be shared in Australia. So we need to think about social media as uh, playing the following roles. Being a space where we shift the narrative, we have high quality debates, mm -hmm. information sharing, uh, sharing of good practices as well as bad practices because yes. if one community somewhere in the world tried something it didn't work, they should share it so yeah. that somebody else doesn't have to, uh, you know, uh, do it all over do again. It all over again. Yeah. And, and it also doesn't mean, of course, that what works in one place does not work in another place, but still having that knowledge is, is important. The other role I think social media must begin to play more effectively is to think about the language of social media. Oh, okay. Because often it seems the assumption that gets made is that most people in the world speak the mainstream languages mm -hmm. of English, French, Spanish and so on. For many of the most uh, vulnerable communities mm -hmm. in the most vulnerable places in the world, they are not using those languages. Yeah. So we need to get a little bit more, I think, 
language sensitive. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about a literal translation of the language, it's about understanding what the image is and, and, and so on. Are. And I think that part of the process of maximizing and enhancing the full power of social media is also thinking about what tools can we place in the hands of local communities yes, that sure. enable them to communicate back their reality because quite often when we think about how we can use social media for advocacy purposes, yes. we see it as a one way straight. Mm -hmm. Some people who know telling some people who don't know and the world is never as linear and straightforward as that. Absolutely. Because yes, we might know something, but the people that we're trying to work with, their knowledge mm -hmm. is intelligence, it's market intelligence in corporate terms if you want, but also needs to infuse the thinking that will ensure social media has the maximum impact that it possibly can. Wow. It's such an inspiring interview. Thank you so much for your time, Kumi.